welcome back children so now we are learning the physical barrier of the entry of microorganisms we know physical barrier means block the entry of microorganisms into the human body so this physical barrier is comes under the surface barrier is that clear children and the surface which will act as a surface in your body skin and the mucous membrane so skin now look at the structure of the skin the skin layer consists of the skin layer is consists of first epidermis layer okay epidermis layer is the epi means upon dermis means skin so first layer of the skin is epidermis that is only we can able to see externally so this is epidermis and below epidermis what is the layer is present that we can call it as dermis so epidermis down we can see dermis and down we can see the adipose tissues all round like round round like structures no that is only adipose tissues or nothing but a fat cells in that only the glycogen will be stored in your body whatever you are taking more food no that will be converted in the form of glycogen even the glucose can be converted in the form of glycogen it will be stored in the adipose tissues The, the so the adipose tissues are present the skin layer down to the skin layer but exactly down to the dermis layer is that clear children and and here you want to remember a two important gland okay sweat gland so sweat gland it can see above the adipose tissues above the adipose tissues only we can able to see the sweat gland and the sweat gland started to secrete sweat okay and also sebaceous gland sebaceous gland it started to produce sebum or oil sebaceous gland which can be so this can be now look at this so here we can see the sebaceous gland so this sebaceous gland it can be synthesize oil or sebum so this also will prevent the entry of microorganisms into the body imagine that's why we used to tell please do so many healthy exercise thereby your body started to release sweat so this sweat contains lots of bactericidal and fungicidal and viral antiviral properties this sweat because sweat will contain salt and other uh, uh, nitrogenous compounds and also a lysozyme so many is that that i'll explain in physiological part of this sweat that's why we are telling to do so many work so while doing work or while doing exercise your body will start to release sweat so this sweat will kill most of the bacteria and fungi and viruses in your outer body even so your body won't get bacteria or fungi virus if a person is doing hard work or if a person is um, uh, doing so many exercise or cycling or other process so every day your body should do some work thereby your body should release sweat sweat would contain lots of salts and all so this salts and all will break the bacterial wall will break the fungi wall it will act as the antiviral properties like that so many things in that that i'll explain in physiology so here you want to remember you want to do so many physical exercise thereby you can escape from so many bacterial infections so where the sweat gland is present sweat gland is present above the adipose tissue and sebaceous gland is present above the adipose tissues near to the hair near to the hair cells near to the hair cells is that clear children so this sebaceous gland and also sweat gland they possess a very two important bactericidal and fungicidal properties that alone we learned in a physical barriers and what could be the functions that we learn in the physiological barriers is that clear children so here in skin what do you want to remember skin will produce uh, so many sweat and also some oily because some faces and all will be very oily you know so this oily uh, was produced by the sebaceous gland both also will present in the dermis layer of the skin only so above the adipose tissue your sweat gland near to the hair cell your sebaceous gland started to produce sebum or oil or sweat will act as the uh, 
uh, antibacterial and anti fungi is that clear children and that is we have learned under the skin skin comes under physical barrier physical barrier comes under surface barrier is that clear and next one mucus lining this is very very important we know skin is the outer uh, keratinized k e r a t i n i s e d e keratinized skin is a very outer layer very hard keratinized outer layer of the body that covers all external parts and also it will have form a very effective barrier for most of the bacterial fungi and viral diseases is that clear so that's thing i have explained what can be seen inside the uh, dermis layer and how it will protect your body against so many diseases and very important second is mucus membrane okay second is mucus membrane under physical under surface layer so what is mucus membrane children mucus membrane can be seen uh, mucus membrane or lining both are uh, synonym only now look at the slide first point the mucus lining or membrane it is can be found in the respiratory tract so where and all we can see mucus membrane respiratory tract we can see digestive tract urinary tract and also reproductive tract all those tract will secrete mucus okay this mucus what it will do means it will traps the microbes thereby it will makes them immobilize immobilize means it it will not the microbes won't move from that place because once the mucus were there and it will trap the microbes once it was trapped by the my, my mucus and furthermore movement will be stopped thereby we can prevent the enter of microbes throughout the body so that work was done by the mucus membrane so it will trap and automatically for example uh, it will trap and it will keep it in throat for some days for example that's why we will get a throat infection and that is the first symptoms so we used to cough and we used to sneeze first it was it will be in the upper respiratory region only now imagine coronavirus means first what they are telling symptom is uh, throat infection and coughing and also sometimes sneezing also will be there so first it will be in the upper respiratory region first your body uh, will uh, act as a barrier to stop the uh, viruses or bacteria to enter throughout the body first it will prevent in the upper respiratory region even so we need to cough we need to sneeze so thereby also some infection will come out from the body and even the tonsils will present in your body it will have a so much of a power to act against the um, antigens that we have learned in uh, grade 11 now it will contain in six regions it will contain a uh, uh, power to fight against with the uh, antigens like bacteria or uh, other viruses so in case if it is not uh, succeeded means only it will reach your body organs so that's why first this mucus lining layer act as the barrier to prevent the entry of antigens throughout the body so the mucus lay mucus which was secreted by all those tract which will absorb the uh, antigens and it will not allow to move from one place to another place that is only we are called as immobilize okay so that too which is comes under the mucus membrane and skin both are comes under physical or anatomical barriers of surface barrier is that clear till now thank you children next we'll move on to the phys physiological barriers so physiological barriers so till now we have learned about a physical or anatomical here there is no role simply it used to oh, it won't allow to enter into your body if not if it once it enter also it will uh, not allow to move from one place to another place so that work was done by your skin and your mucus membrane with that physical or anatomical barrier of the surface barrier will finished next we'll move on to the physiological barrier so what could be the definition for physiological barriers it will prevent the growth of pathogens and microorganisms in the body so that is the physiological please write it down what is the physiological barriers 
it will prevent the growth of pathogens it will prevent the growth of pathogens and microorganisms in the body first what the physical barrier will do it will block the entry of microorganisms into the body that is the role of physical what is the physiological it will stop the growth of microorganisms or pathogens into the body okay that is only we can call it as physiological barriers and what and all factors no factors will be i will explain all those things okay factors what and all factors will be seen in your body to act against the pathogens for example a chemical secretions like lysosomes lysozymes so lysozymes can be seen in your tears okay where and all we can see lysozymes lysozymes can be seen in your tears of your eyes can be seen in your saliva so tears and saliva this lysozyme will kill the antigens when it is exposed to your eyes when it is exposed to your mouth all mouth also both the areas the lysozymes kill the pathogens thereby it won't allow the pathogens to develop in your body first chemical secretion like lysozymes and skin secretion as we have learned the sebaceous gland and the salivary uh, sec, uh, sweat gland sweat gland i told you know it started to secrete uh, salt and fatty acids no automatically that we can call it as perspiration p e r s p i r a t i o n a perspiration of the uh, sweat gland that contains so much of salt and fatty acids so the sweat will contains salt and also fatty acids it will break the bacterial cell wall fungi cell wall and also it started to break the viruses also so thereby it will act as a physiological barrier thereby it will act as a physiological barrier so they'll destroy microorganisms that is the role of skin secretions so even oily gland will not allow to enter or spread through the body and also they'll have some chemical compounds to break the cell wall of your bacteria so all what we are getting every day no all got skipped only the sweat and also the oily substance which is produced from our body will act as a barrier to stop the growth of microorganisms into our body and as i told the saliva also have lysozymes will kill the antigens and ear wax or uh, outer ear no it will contains a wax so it will not allow to enter uh, insects and also microbes so these uh, you know these act as a physiological barriers these act as the physiological barriers so we'll see one by one detail quickly so ba physiological barriers also can comes under surface barrier only so first one lysozyme so lysozyme it is an antibacterial enzyme present in tears nasal secretion saliva and most of the body fluids even in sweat gland also even in sweat also we can see lysozymes so it can it can be seen in tears and mouth saliva and nasal secretion and also the body fluid like sweat so what it will contains it will contains the antibacterial capacity it lyses the bacterial cell lyses means it will lysis means death of the bacteria once the cell wall was broken automatically the bacteria will die so that is only we can call it as lysis the bacterial cell second skin secretion as i told sweat and sebum has an antibacterial and antifungal properties it avoids the growth of bacteria and fungi of the skin next saliva contains even saliva contains lysozyme that lyses the bacteria and the It, when it enters into the body inside gut the gastric juices contains the dilute hydrochloric acid you no know, it also will kill the, most of the bacteria for example without knowing when we have our food we used to have so much of bacteria also so all those bacteria were killed by the uh, stomach hcl and it will kill the microbes enter through the food that is very very important and ear wax is secreted in external auditory canal Uh, that is also bactericidal in nature it triples the insects and it traps the dust so all this work was done by your ear wax so thereby it will protect your body that's why we are called as physiological barrier under surface barrier so till now you are clear children so that's all about the
surface barrier under surface barrier we have learned the physical and physiological under physical we have learned skin and mucous membrane under physiological we have learned about the uh, acid in stomach saliva in mouth tears in eyes and also lysozymes um everything we have learned so all those things will prevent the growth of microbes in our body so now the entry of microbes were stopped by physical or physiological whatever the condition now imagine suppose because of physical because of physiological the microbes is not at all uh, died or it is not at all denatured means and it will enter into your cells is that clear now uh, it will cross all those physical barrier physiological barrier now any one of the antigen was enter into our cells how the cell will act as the barrier to stop the growth of microorganisms in cell and neighboring cells so that is only we want to learn under a cellular barriers that is second category now physical barrier completed physiological barrier completed now we are in the third stage cellular barrier without knowing with uh, all those things physical physiological it will cross all those uh, uh, steps and it will now enter into the cellular cellular level so how your cell will act as the barrier that is only we are going to see in the cellular and biochemical barrier is that clear children so we we, we shall see in detail regarding the cellular and biochemical barrier so here cellular and biochemical it is a second line body defense so if the question is like that what is the first line defense first line defense is defense is physical and physiological physical and physiological can be uh, can be explained by first level of first level of uh, defense and second when cellular barriers and other barriers and all comes under second line body defense so it includes what are things biocides natural killer cells interferons inflammatory responses is that clear children please write out and keep it so in your book it was given only a less material so that is enough for your ncert exam so for your competitive exam you can use this point okay what are those pagocyte pagocytes natural killer cells or nk cells and inflammatory cells and interferon cells we know process of pagocytosis okay and natural killer cells i'll explain interferons as a viral proteins and inflammatory response also i'll explain in detail we shall see one by one in detail children is that clear please write down and keep it so what is second line defense second line defense started with the cellular barriers so it will includes phagocytes natural killer cells interferons inflammatory response so we'll see one by one first one phagocytes so here we have learned in lower class no phago means engulfing as such pinocytes means only drinking so phagocytes the process of engulfing and destroying the micro by some cells is called phagocytosis now imagine so it will cross the physical and physiological barrier now it has enter into any one of the cell it might might be liver cell or it might be pancreas cells or it might be uh, any a lung cell or any one part of the organ cells it was reached now your body what it will do means your body you know whatever the organ it won't spread throughout the body so it might be in some of the organ uh, tissues of cells so what your where it is affected you no know, the cell the cell itself you no know, they'll have a uh, some uh, antibodies sorry they cell they cell have a uh, some uh, uh types of cells like i'll explain all those things we have uh, five types of white blood cells no neutrophils eosinophils um monocytes like that so many types of white blood cells will be there so these white blood cells it just engulf as such it will uh, engulf the microbes and where lysozymes will be secreted will break all those uh, um, bacteria or fungi or virus thereby further entry of uh, microbes to the neighboring cells were stopped so this is only we can call it as phagocytosis 
very simple the process of engulfing and destroying the microbe by some cells is called phagocytosis and the which cells and all will involve means phago which cells and all will in, involve phagocytosis is are called phagocytes so we can't tell only liver cell act as a phagocytes only these cells which cells and all will involve the phagocytosis process all those cells totally in term we can call it as phagocytes so phagocytosis is a process phagocytes is a cell which will undergo phagocytosis process and what and all cells so you write and keep it neutrophils what is neutrophil it is also a type of white blood cells and monocytes monocytes means macrophages okay so it used to engulf the big particles so these are types of white blood cells or important phagocyte phagocytic cells most probably phagocytic cells are white blood cells we all well know that uh, white blood cell is they are uh, immunity possessing cells so these cells only most probably act as the uh, phagocyte cells like neutrophils and monocytes okay what is the other name for m for m you can remember m for m monocytes or macrophages so please uh, this is uh, just to draw and keep it in your notebook this is a process of phagocytosis here now imagine the cell is uh, of neutrophil or monocytes or macrophages now first stage a process of phagocytosis the first cell this is your microbes now entering into your the white blood cells imagine neutrophils or macrophages so first one as a toxics that is only we are called as hemotoxis or adherence of microbes to the phagocytes hemotoxis means it's a chemical toxin where in were enter into your body cell and after the entry integration of microbes by phagocytosis now this entry of microorganisms to the wall layer we can call it as integration thereby a uh, there is going to be a reaction between a cell and the microbes and third when this phagocytosis that is phagocytic vesicles so we know this uh, cell will contain a vesicle so inside vesicle the microbes will enter and inside the cell what important cell organelle will be lysosome will be so this lysosome cell started to secrete a lysozyme enzyme on the vesicle of a phagocytes so now the reactions will be there between the lysozyme enzyme and the phagocytic cell and it partially digested the microbes and only res residual will be left over okay and indigested material and it will be released through the uh, uh, waste particle and it will reach your uh, body and it will come out as a waste is that clear children so this is the work of phagocytosis so phagocytosis what it will do it will engulf the microbes so it will reach the vesicle part lysosome started to release lysozyme enzyme will engulf the microbes digestion of microbes would takes place and it start then death of the microbes that is lysis of the microbes thereby further entry of microbes to the neighboring cells were stopped that's why we are called as second line defense is that clear children so next we'll move on to the nature natural killer cells so first type phagocytes finished under cellular under cellular barriers okay certain types of leukocytes leukocytes only we have learned in a monocytes under and also the neutrophils and next to when natural killer cells so it will be very very interesting nk cells okay so it is all different types of cellular barrier always uh, we can't see phagocytes is always not natural killer cells we can see different uh, types or different kinds so if it is a natural killer cells and this natural killer cells are also lymphocytes only is that dear children so don't forget 
natural killer cells are also a large lymphocytes are also a white blood cells only are also a white blood cells natural killer cells are also a type of lymphocytes so types of lymphocytes means it is also a type of white blood cells only actually they do not attack the invading microbe directly how the phagocytes no they'll directly attack the microbes and their microbes will die but here instead they kill cells even for example if one cell is having antigen so this killer cells will kill the cell even directly not it will kill the cells directly but indirectly microbes not directly microbes is that clear so what the natural killer cells will do it is a non phagocytic why we are telling non phagocytic because directly it won't work on the microbes but it directly work on microbes possessing cells that's why we are call it as directly attacking cells indirectly attacking microbes that's why we are call it as non phagocytic or large lymphocytes so how it will attack means it mainly recognize the viral infected cells and tumor cells so how phagocytosis is common for bacterial disease like that natural killer cell is very particular about viral infected cells and tumor cells tumor cells means cancer causing cells what it will do means it will destroy them by secreting cytolysin hence these are called killer cells so what do i mean by cytolysin children actually this natural killer cells they used to a uh, produce a protein called perforins p e r f o r i n s p e r f o r i n s perforins p e r f o r i n s perforins actually these proteins are uh, produced from the killer cells even and this perforin means pores perforin means pores so once the pore uh, bearing uh, proteins were produced means the cell started to have a so small small pores in their body so this pores allows a water to enter the cells so once the water were entered automatically it will burst so the cell will burst so thereby even the microorganism which is present in the cells also will burst so that is the concept behind the natural killer cells so what do you want to remember children natural killer cells are also a type of uh, lymphocytes or type of white blood cells but it is a non phagocytic so it will mainly recognize viral or cancer causing cells what is the function behind means here they started to produce uh, many pores on the plasma membrane how the pores can be produced for example it uh, the uh, cell even started to produce a protein called perforin so this perforin which was released from the cell even so this perforin allows uh, more pores so more pores will allows more entry of water into the cell so the cell becomes swelled very turgid so it will burst while bursting the cell also will die even the microbes also will die so that is the concept behind the um uh, natural killer cell natural killer cell is the clear children so now look at the slide so first and imagine this is a normal cell this is a normal cell and here the cell won't die but here in uh, here this is a natural killer cell it will contain what so many pores like small small many opening were there and inside that also so many infection will be there so the infection because of this infection the cell can detect the infection started to produce a one protein perforin protein because of perforin protein more pores were produced on the plasma membrane so this pores allows a water more so this cell become uh, swelled so <coughs> it burst out so it will kill the tumor cell and also it will kill the and uh, antigens or uh, virus which is present in the micro which is present inside the cell 
so this is the concept behind the natural killer cell killing a target cell natural killer cell killing a target cell even is that clear children so next we'll move on to the third concept interferons so here uh, usually i used to tell no what is interferon interferon is a viral protein so here now imagine if one virus is enter into your body interferon is a second line defense if virus is enter into your body a body will detect the virus and the dna of your cell started to produce one protein that is only we can call it as interferon so that protein name we can call it as antiviral protein okay interferon or antiviral glycoprotein this is all very very important interferon is a viral protein so viral protein means what is the nature glycoprotein it contains glucose plus amino acids containing protein so glycoprotein and what is the character it will possess an antiviral properties and which cells will produce interferon which cells will have a virus in it so these are produced by viral infected animal cells and it will protects the neighboring cells from viral infections so you want to remember interferons are a proteins or a viral proteins are produced from the cell after affected by the virus once this interferon cells were produced so this will give information to the neighboring cells thereby the neighboring cells dna will be very active to stop the growth of a uh, virus in their neighboring cells i will explain with the help of diagram and you can able to understand very clearly so it mainly stimulates neighboring cells to synthesize protein that interfere so why we are call it as interferon means it will interfere okay it will interfere with the viral replication that is very very important why we are call it as interferon it will interfere with the viral replications and also activates macrophages and nk cells to recognize infected cells so it will activate what macrophages and also nk cells that is natural killer cells to recognize inf infected cells thereby even the infected cells will die and it is giving commands to the signal to the neighboring cells not to replicate the viral virus not to replicate the virus is that clear children this is a concept i'll explain with the help of diagram now look at this slide now this is a first cell now this first cell is affected by the virus now viral nucleic acid is enter to the first cell now look at that first the number was given 1 2 3 okay how the interferon were produced now first the virus is entering to the cell of our body now this is the viral rna or dna whatever it is rna virus or dna virus so because of this entry of rna into your rna or dna into your body and your body dna will detect so this started to produce a messenger rna so this that is transcription and this messenger rna started to produce protein okay translation so what is the protein here protein here is interferon molecules is that clear so this interferon molecule were produced from the host cell makes interferon is killed by virus is killed by virus and here we are telling no this protein now will pass to the neighboring cells okay and interferon what this protein will do it will stimulate cell to turn on genes to activate proteins so here it is giving command to initiate the genes in a dna to produce more interferons so this more interferons that is only we are called as antiviral proteins so this more interferon proteins no this proteins will block the viral replication inside your body so the, because we need to uh, stop the reproduction of virus so it will block the viral reproductions thereby the further uh, multiplication of virus in your body was stopped one process second this cells will contain some viruses no so this was killed by natural killer cells where it will kill the cell even where it will kill the cell even so this is the process behind the interferon 
so here you want to remember interferon is a viral protein viral protein is not produced by virus instead instead of virus you are after entering into your body uh, to uh, to kill against the virus your body started to produce a protein that's the thing we are called as interferons so interferons are antiviral proteins interferons are antiviral proteins or glycoproteins so it was synthesized by the dna by messenger rna and uh, protein transcription and translation and afterwards the neighboring cells will get alerted and the affected cell will be died because of the natural killer cells is that clear children i think now you are clear with the interferon okay next we'll move on to the inflammatory responses inflammatory responses so here we are telling okay uh, virus infected cells secrete interferons that protect the non infected cells so the interferons are also a class of uh, glycoproteins released by the infected cells so here you want to remember interferons or or a class of glycoproteins are released by the infected cells when they attack a virus so the term interferon is based on what property interfere with the replication of viruses interfere with the replication of viruses is that clear children and a viral attack you know it will triggers number of reactions in the infected cells by which not only a virus multiply but the same time as infected cells get it started to stimulate and produced interferons and interferons by themselves are not antiviral but bring about cellular changes in other non infected cells and it how like how vaccine will work no like that it will bring us some mechanisms so it is very very effective for some of the virus this interferon virus is very very effective some of the virus for hepatitis virus and also influenza viruses and also this uh, interferon will possess some anti cancerous properties also now the studies were going uh, to check the interferons uh, how it will act as the anti cancerous so here you want to remember interferon it is not for the infected cells interferon protein is for the non infected cells to give alertness to stop the multiplication of the virus and the infected cells can be died by the process of natural killer cells is that clear children so that's all about the interferons so interferons only we are call it as um cytokine barriers interferons only we can call it as cytokine barriers which was given in your book so virus infected cells secretes a protein called interferons which will protect non infected cells from further viral infections so we can call it as cytokine barriers is that clear children so next class i'll explain about the acquired immunity in detail thank you